<coughs> just to number our days. Thank you, Spence. Thank you. Teach us to number our days so that we may apply the wisdom that you have given us. So we have many saints among us whom we celebrate, but today we are celebrating um, our eldest, 101 this week, Sid Offen. And I believe our second eldest, um, Gil Grady, who today is turning 98. Is this correct, Dottie? Today. Right. So Gil cannot be with us as she is homebound at this point, but um, Daddy cares for her incredibly faithfully. And so let's, this last Wednesday, Sid turned 101. Gil turns 98 today. When Gil could be at church, I believe she usually sat right in back of where, Gil, of where Sid sits. And they would stand up on the same Sunday uh, for their birthdays. And Sid would always teach, tease Gil that she would never catch up with him. <laughs> and Gil teased Sid that he was a pretty good boyfriend. But this year, Gil is homebound, and Dottie cares for her with the beautiful loyalty and faith that many, many years as a couple has brought them. After a coffee hour today, some of our musicians are going to her home to serenade her. When I visited with uh, Sid earlier this week, we talked about his birthday, and he said that he would not be mean to Gil anymore and tease her about being the eldest. <laughs> so we're glad you're, you, you know, you can always reform your ways, right? Yes. <laughs> but between these two, there is great uh, wisdom that comes from years of living the faith, wisdom that only long experience uh, can bring. So when I brought, uh, when, uh, when Sid and I shared communion this past Monday, I read from two passages. I read from the Gospel of John, verses, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should have eternal life. And I read from Psalm 42. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? And then I skip down to verse 7. Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance. And my God. And I hope I'm not embarrassing Sid. This whole um, sermon comes from our time, so please don't be embarrassed. <laughs> but Sid spoke up and he said, That's the secret. Now, when somebody is um, 101, tells you that that is the secret, you sit up and listen. Okay, so sit up and listen, folks, because <laughs> this is the secret. Trust. Trust. It's not just about believing in God, it's about trusting God. Now, uh, um, Lloyd was just at a weekend retreat at the prison, right, a couple weeks ago for Kairos. And apparently, um, as part of that retreat, uh, the men were asked, who believes in God? And everyone raised their hand. Everybody raised their hand. And then the question was, who trusts in God? And not so many hands went up. Right? Because there's a big difference between believing in God in your head and trusting God in your heart with everything you've got, with everything that's important to you. Trusting. So, um, you know, I quickly looked in my purse for something to take notes with because this is, this is really um, beautiful and we don't usually have conversations like this. I, I usually carry a little moleskin notebook I had taken it out of my purse that morning. So what I had was two checkbooks. So I wrote quickly on the back of my two checkbooks. Um, because here's the thing. Even that differentiation between believing with your head and trusting with your heart, okay, that that's a different thing. Believing in your head, trusting in your heart. That can easily be said with your head, right? But it's a whole different thing when someone says it to you because they know the difference. 
They truly and really know that difference. They have lived that difference. And they're still struggling with that difference between knowing and trusting. Because no matter how old you are, the journey with the Lord doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It goes on, and it gets deeper and deeper, and more and more personal, more and more connected, like, you know, a long friendship or a long marriage. So from the back of my notebook, here's the sermon that uh, my friend said he would preach if he were a preacher. And I offer it with gratitude uh, for his life and the life of so many saints that have passed through this congregation. Um, who have walked for so long uh, as part of Christ's body, the church. Believe in God, yes, but even more trust in God. Pray and then relax. Accept the answer, regardless of whether it is yes or no or not yet or maybe. Whatever the answer is, Trust that this is the best answer for you. That's what trust is. Trust and relax. And my friends, right? It is so much better for you, for you, your blood pressure, your heart, everything about it is so much better. Trust and relax. And when you are trusting, you can live uh, like like uh, so many who have lived a long time in the faith do. With Christ at your right shoulder. Sometimes, of course, this is my right shoulder, right? <laughs> Dyslexic here. Sometimes, of course, Christ at your right shoulder says, okay, let's get going. And he doesn't just ask, he pushes you. He pushes you, pushes you right into a ministry or an action that you might want not want to do, especially, or that might be new for you, or that might be a stretch for you. But he doesn't really let up, you know? He just loves you enough to keep at it, to keep pushing you uh, towards your best and your highest. Now, this is an aside here, but uh, we are in the middle of our annual campaign, and we have speakers and writers each Sunday. Our writer this Sunday was Ann Donaldson, and um, in your bulletin is her little piece, her writing. And it is about her being, you know, this push into something new and just trying something new, living freely, generously with trust, that when God says, let's get going, okay, let's get going, even if it's something you think you can't do or you've never done before. Uh, so um, so that's, the, um, that's what this trust is about that, that we were talking about with uh, Sid. So there's this hymn, you know the hymn, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, For the Bible Tells Me So. That's part of trust, knowing that you're so loved. But the but Sid asks, but where does the Bible say that? That Jesus loves me. Where in the Bible does it say that? Well, there is one place. There is one place, and it is in that gospel verse that I referenced previously. John 3, 16. Now I'm guessing that in Sid's Sunday school, as in my Sunday school, we were instructed to replace the world, God so loved the world, with our name. So God so loved Linda. God so loved Connie. Right? So instead of God so loved the world, the verse becomes God so loved, please insert your name, Linda. That he gave his only son that when Linda believes in him, Linda, right? Say your name. Receives eternal life. Now that's Sunday school, folks. That is good old-time Sunday school. And it stands you in good stead. And during a lifetime of walking with Christ, we come to the conclusion that believing is actually far more about (coughs) trusting. And so the verse, John 3.16, the verse then becomes... God so loves Linda that he gave his that he gives his only son so that as Linda trusts 
in him, we enter into eternal life. Now that's, again, that is old time Sunday school material mixed with experience, mixed with prayer, mixed with the spirit, and it's gold. And I recommend it to you. Repeat it over and over to yourself because you enter into eternal life as you as you inwardly digest this truth. And it becomes gold when you digest it and when you practice it. Because there's this deep consciousness of being loved, of truly loved, and as this willingness to keep widening the circle of trust, as that increases in you, then you get to new places. You get to new places in your consciousness and you get to new places in your life. And you get to places that, quite frankly, our culture still has a hard time with. Because the other half of this beautiful sermon uh, that I was that I uh, channeled you, I received, has to do with recognizing this one whom God has sent, who loves us so much that He gave His life on our behalf, who gave His life on your behalf. How do you recognize Him? How do you know that this is Christ? Because even the disciples had a hard time recognizing him, even though they'd spent so much time with him. They were walking, you know, after the crucifixion, there are these two disciples walking back to home to Emmaus, and Jesus himself comes up and walks with them, and they don't even know that it's him. And they have spent a lot of time with him. So how can we recognize him? Because certainly he is not what we are expecting. Our image of him might be as a blonde, tall, Norwegian-type guy. But what do we make of him being dark-skinned, dark-haired, small guy, not a citizen, executed as a lawbreaker? I mean, how are we to recognize him? Because he is certainly still among us, certainly still with us. Christ is with us now all the time. And with that, my friend, fell silent. So I'm not going to finish that question. I'm not going to answer that question because it is a parable type question that has the ability to expose and explode our assumptions about who is great, about who is worthwhile, and to whom we should pay particular attention. How are we to recognize him? So here's my, in my own words, my little summary of this um, gem of a sermon that I was uh, given. Let God's deep and abiding love for you increase your trust. Not just your belief, but your trust in Him. Even when He leads you into a hard place of challenging and questioning many of your cultural assumptions. And even when that questioning puts you on a different road than the popular one. Maybe even when that trust leads you to a radical simplifying of your life so that you have more room for Christ and more to give to others. But above all, continue to grow in trusting relaxation and stay open to recognizing Christ in very unexpected places and very unexpected people. Thanks be to God for the saints among us, for the saints who uh, share their wisdom with the rest of us. And thank you for all of us who are willing to live at the far edge of trust and to be led into places that might be uncomfortable, knowing that Christ is at our right shoulder, leading us and guiding us. 
Thank you, Sid, for being here, being here. And thank you for Carol and Lloyd for getting in here. Mm -hmm. And for your long faithfulness, for Gil's long faithfulness, and for Gil's courage in being who she is and leading the rest of us into lives of bravery and courage. I'm going to end with, a, with an old hymn that we, I, I do not find the music for, but um, this is a hymn that uh, Sid and I in our uh, voices sang, which we will not do for you this morning. <laughs> I would be true, for there are those who trust me. I would be pure, for there are those who care. I would be strong, for there is much to suffer. I would be brave, for there is much to dare. I would be friend to all the foe and the friendless. I would be giving and forget the gift. I would be humble, for I know my weakness. I would look up and laugh and love and live. Amen. Amen.